Good evening. This is Earthquake Kelly, and you are live this evening. We're taking phone calls this evening. <laughs> if you would like to call, dealing with the subjects, I'm going to show a subject that if you're dealing with that subject that I call, I have about 10 different subjects here. You may call in tonight at 1-6-6-1-9-4-4. Hello, Renee. one four two nine you may call and discuss the thing that I'm talking about at this time Mr. Doubt <laughs> I try to leave him over there at the mall somewhere I hope he don't show up Well, well, actually, who's that ask for, Mr. Doubt? <clears throat> Get out of here, Mr. Doubt. Anyway, we were talking earlier today about Cerberus. Cerberus. When someone calls you a female dog. So... If you don't deal with that, that can have a lasting effect on you. Yes, Suburus. So we're gonna talk about different subjects. And if any one of these subjects you're battling with, you can call area code 661-944-1429. I'm going to show some more here in just a second or so. Okay, turn this around here. Mm -hmm. This lady is telling people. So. If you're having a problem with about ready to give up and you want us to call and pray with you for encouragement, as she is telling, don't quit. Don't give up. Even though you can't see, see the small C, even though you can't see God, does not mean he is not with you. So just because you can't see, you can hardly see this little word see, does not mean that God is not with you. So that's what she's saying, don't okay, give well. up. No matter how discouraged it seems, don't give up. Just because you can't see God or feel him, does it not mean that he's not there. You're about the birds are giving up, we're here to encourage you. Let me see what this one is. Now, Bell, Isaiah 46 and verse 1. A spirit that rides on the backs of females and slows you down, tries to control you, tries to control everything you do. And this lady, she's going through it, even attacks her in parts of her body. And she's saying, why do I always feel like there is something very heavy riding on my back? It stops everything I put my hands to. See, that's Bill. You'll find that in Isaiah 46, verse 1. It's trying to stop your what? 
and your when, your where, and your how. Don't be afraid. Let's pray, especially women who are already going through stuff. That's Isaiah 46 and 1. Another case in point. She's at her wit's end. She feels like she can't go another day. She's like, I just... If I could just make it through this day, everything seems to be going wrong. She's just a nervous wreck. Just nervous. No, it's paper and just just ink, <laughs> watercolor. Just watercolor. But thank you though, appreciate it. I can't, you can't seem to, oh, miss, bad back, oh, yeah, Michelle, I know about them deceitful lawyers, I got ripped off by one in the car accident, they're gonna, I told them they're gonna roast in hell. No, hey, Ruth, how are you? No, this is a, this is a drawing, see? It's a drawing. God has just blessed me to, he just blessed me to, to be able to, to draw. See, it's just a drawing. Yeah, thank you, though, I appreciate you. Now, this is, this is just a drawing. Yeah, that's a drawing, you guess. Simply, you know, just. I've been doing it for a long time. And then watercolor. Mm-hmm. And you put the watercolor on there. Hi, Melinda. How are you? Reflection box. Even the light flashes off. Yeah, I've been doing it a long time. Never been to school. It's just God blessed me to, to be able to draw.
Here you put the watercolors and stuff on it. And there you go. Or you can watercolor, or you can use the flesh tones. These are flesh tones, they're called flesh tones. See, flesh tones. And you work with the shadings and what have you, and the shadow and the shadings, and after a while you keep going over them and A little light there. You use different shadings, skin tones, and and after a while you darken and go over it, darken, go over it light. And if you like to little lipstick you can go over it again so then you go with the darker some highlights and stuff like that there yeah. Some eyebrow pencil at the bottom. I watch my wife put on eyebrow pencil. Cause, uh, I watch her do it, so. There you go. Little shadowing here every now and then. Just an example. So, she, to the place to where she feels like she's giving up or giving in, she sees, she see a little light at the end of the tunnel. So she's trying to hang on and not give up. That's the main thing. If you want to call, the number is 661. 944-1429. Any subject dealing with these art, more than happy to pray for you. Let's see what this one is. Aha, this is David. David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. And David had four more stones. He got out the brook. He clocked him. Pow! Down he went. Down Goliath went. Goliath was talking a lot of junk, see? And David ran towards him. He didn't walk or hide like his brothers. His brother Eliab was hiding behind a rock. David said, come on. He talk kind of stuff. This guy had on 500 pounds of armor. He's like, he's like a guy at the, the strongest guy at the gym picking up a, your stove out your kitchen and your refrigerator and maybe one of your dryer or your washer and carrying all three of them around with him all day. That's what this guy was like. Then you can hear the shins because he had his shins protected. He had a suit of mail on, so this, your sword and arrows wouldn't be able to stick him in his, in his ribs or kidneys or heart. But he also had a target in the middle of his chest 
to defy people. Say, okay, if you're going to hit me, hit me right here. You can't. And he has six fingers and six toes. Yeah, he has six. He has six fingers and six toes. Yep. He was a show enough monster. He was a serious monster. Six fingers and six toes. That in itself would scare people. Not David, though. David wasn't impressed. So what's the giant in your life? Sickness, finances, yeah. sickness, finances, shame, poverty. What's the Goliath? Oppression, depression. Asthma, some people can't breathe good. Asthma. So you got six fingers? Some people are born that way. Not make it fun. Diabetes, yeah. Yeah. I just found out a member of my family has diabetes today. Just found it out. It just hurt so painful. And I just love this person so much. They told me that. Blood disorder. Hey, Lydia. Blood disorder. Giants. But look what happened. And David. The lion. Sure did. He went, he went in. Was that remnant? Yeah, RGM. Yeah, that's a serious dude, man. Then he had a target. He had a target in there. Like, you think you can take me? Let me see, I'm gonna find that scripture real fast. Let's see if I can find it, yeah. Oh no, somebody calling you a B? Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, Jesus. No, no, no. Oh, bloody Jesus. 
Lord have mercy. Oh no. Wow. I'm gonna pray with you, okay? Let me find this David and Goliath in the Bible here. Knocking on your walls right now. Oh no. Oh mm, boy. Yeah, I know, this stuff is real. Hold on, brother, let me, I'm gonna pray with you. Let me go find, um, we talked about David and Goliath. Okay, I'm going to read this and then we're going to try to deal with David and Goliath here. We're in 1 Samuel. And we do need your support. I thank you for y'all. It's been given, but it's been really, really small. But thank you. 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 17. Now the Philistines gathered together their army to battle and were gathered together at Shocho, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shocho and Azekah in Ephraim Demdim. And Saul and the men of Israel gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array. Array means face to face against the enemy. When he says something in array, that means you set your army against their army. See where it says array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. It was like 10 feet tall and had, and had a helmet of brass upon his head. And he was armed with a coat of mail that's the original bulletproof vest. That's what we used to call bulletproof vest back in those days when they first came out. Mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. This dude was heavy, a few hundred pounds. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs. In other words, if you shot him with an arrow, it wouldn't penetrate. Now, and he had a target of brass between his shoulders at target. You know how you don't you have target practice at the, the with your bow and arrow? Well he had this on between his shoulders. It's like guys ain't bold enough to come up against me. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. Like almost little shorter than a telephone pole. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. Now his head, is, the weight of it is like the heaviest bowling ball. Imagine somebody throwing a bowling ball at you 95 miles an hour. And then this bowling ball's got a point on it, like a nice sharpened to a point and he hit you 95 miles an hour. This is what this guy had in his arsenal. And he stood and cried 
unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, why are you come out to set your battle in the way? In other words, why you come out to set your battle in preparation to fight us? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you and choose your man for you. Choose your man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and kill me. Now watch this now. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then will we be your servants. Now, wait a minute. If I kill you and you're part of that collective, how you going to be my servant and I killed you? Here, so that messy talking, but it really wasn't messy if you look at it from the demonic realm. We're gonna pray for you, Remnant. We're gonna pray with you, man. Then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then ye shall be our servants and serve us. That's all the enemy wants. He want to come in your house, break you down, do all the crazy stuff he can do to you. Kill. Kill your desire to fight back. Kill your desire to fight back. So you could look like this in your house, in your house. I'm frustrated. I don't know what to do. I'm about to give up. I'm about to give up, but don't give up. God going to take care of Goliath for you. Verse 10. Verse 10, and the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel. Okay, it's second mistake now. This day, he said, I defy you today. Give me a man that we may fight together. Fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, They were dismayed. And the Bible says, be not dismayed. That's the Bible says. It says, be not dismayed. See, here's how dismayed. Here's how dismayed works. If anybody's listening, if anybody's listening, you might want to hear this. Be not dismayed, God said. But Saul and his men, they were dismayed. Dismayed. Dismayed is a type of a bank, like Bank of America. This, to be dismayed is like being in the bank business. You see that? The more you are dismayed, the more, the more you are dismayed, the more you put into that, that dismayed bank account and it becomes stored inside of your being. And greatly afraid. So the more you dismayed, it starts building like that stuff that gets on the walls, that black stuff, that mold, it becomes a mildew and it gains interest. And the more you demay, the more it goes into your file and to your account and it gains interest. And you could tell when some people are dismayed, they lose the desire to pray, lose the desire to fast. They become moldy kind of people because they were dismayed. And God said, be not dismayed on anything. 
don't care what it is. And fear goes right along with it. Now David was the son of the Ephraimite of Bethlehem of Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And the men were among men for an old man in the days of Saul. He was one of the elders under the kingdom of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul. Went and followed Saul for the battle. And the name of his three sons that went for with Eliab, the oldest, he was the firstborn. Next to him was Abinadab and the third was Shema and David was the youngest and the three eldest followed after Saul to go fight Goliath and the Philistines which was nice to defend your property, defend your people. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening, getting closer and closer, and presented himself 40 days. Now Goliath, Goliath spent 40 days, 40, 40 days taunting the army of God, have you lost your 40 day mind? You're making God mad the first day you went. And then you put 30 more, 39 more days out there messing with God's people. Man, you about to lose your head, didn't even know it. You don't mess with God's people. Don't care who you think they are or who you think they are not. You do not touch God's prophets. You don't, you know, his, his messenger and the harm. You don't touch the least of them, even a child, even an older lady, like mother. This place, mama said this. No, no, no earthquake, mama not said me. Mama is nine years old, brother earthquake. Brother earthquake, mama is nine. Wait a minute, brother earthquake, I'm all confused now myself. Mama is seven years old, brother earthquake. Oh, that's good, Mama. You got to know that somebody mess with you, they're going to be in trouble. I know where it's quick. I tried to tell them, baby, baby, don't do Mama like this, baby. God don't like ugly. He don't like ugly, baby. Don't do Mama like this. Please don't do Mama like this. Mama, 87 years old. Mama trying to find a husband, too. Mama need a husband. You mean you're single, man? I'm looking for me a husband about 35 years old. Mother, you can't get no man 35 years old. How come I can't get no man 35? But everything, mama still got a lot of, got a lot of coal in the fire, please. Okay, mother, we're getting off the subject now. I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. Okay, mother, let's get back on Goliath here. Okay, baby, mama listening. Okay, thank you. Verse 17. First uh, Samuel 17. Now Jesse said unto David, his son, Take now for the for thy brothers in Ephraim. Yeah, she wanted her husband, Tommy. Mother said, Tommy, you find her mama a husband. I'm 87 years old. I still want me a husband. Mother, we trying to get through the story. I'm sorry, baby. Mama, sorry. Okay, thank you, mother. And Jesse said unto David, Take now. For your brethren, an ephod of this parched corn, and parched corn, he's probably makes you doubt something. Parched corn, and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brother. And run. David was a runner. He knew how to run to take care of things from his dad. And being the youngest, you know, he was a runner. And I'm going to show you the reason why I highlighted this, this run here in just a few seconds here. One minute or so. 
to the camp with your brothers and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of the thousand. And each captain had like a thousand men under them. And look how their brothers fare. Although we see how they're doing. And take their pledge. Pledge. Okay, that's another story. Pledge. Okay. Otherwise, what do you say? What do you say, Eli App? What do you say? What do you say, Shaman? Well, I'm pledging that no matter what comes or what goes, I'm not going to stop this battle. I'm going to stay with King Saul and go for it. But, Daddy, if you want to pull me out now, you tell David that I said, no, I'll tell David that I said, pull me out of this thing. Pull me out. Okay, so I said, I'll take the pledge back to, to my dad. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah. Because sometimes, Tommy, some people don't want to fight. Some wars is just downright unnecessary. They don't want to fight. That's, oh, that's another story. Or in the valley either are fighting. They're not in the battle happened. Fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left. Early in the morning. Come on, turn the page here. Oh boy. And left. The sheep were the keeper. And took and went to Jesse. And went at Jesse had commanded him and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistine had put the battle in array, army to army, and David left his carriage in the hands of the keeper of the carriage and ran. There he is again. Now David running, boy, that's a running man. And he ran. There he goes again. He running again. And ran. He ran. Where did he run? Into the army. Thousands of men. And came in, saluted his brethren. Eliab, Shaman, and the other, the other brother. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion of the Philistines of Gath, Goliath. By name, out of the army of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, but this time David heard them. And David heard them. Now, man, now his, this guy messed with them for forty days without a break. Forty days. And watch this now. Watch this. And all the men of Israel. When they saw that man, what happened to him? They became runners too. <laughs> they fled from him and were not only so afraid, they were sore. Now, medically, you're, yeah, right. Medically, you can get so afraid. Ask your doctor. You can get so afraid of something that it would make you sore on the inside. Did y'all hear that? You can be so afraid of somebody bullying you. I really don't have time for bullies. Somebody threatened to fire you and you know you ain't got no other job to go to. You need the money to take care of your business and your family. So afraid that that man is beating you when he come to church and preach. Yeah, that's right. You can get ulcers, exactly. So afraid that even your feet start to swell up. You lose appetite. Or you start eating more. Hey, that's my child, my precious. You get so afraid that you become sore. 
start to worry. The devil would always tell you what's going to happen in the future. And he's an artist. He's an artist. He would draw stuff in your mind and in your eyes for you that hopefully you would get so afraid of what's going to happen, even though it ain't happening, that you get sore on the inside. Even your lips become so chapped that they break and split. That's right. Can't even eat. You've been wanting a good meal all week. Now you can't even eat. Because you're sore. Because of, you're sore because of this thing. A big old giant of something in your way. Don't she look sore to you on the inside? Hey Amen. Don't she look sore, daughter? My precious daughter, don't she look sore? Where's the first place on, on her that you recognize she's sore? Where? Where does she look like she's sore the most? Oh, I'm preaching good to somebody out there. Exactly. Exactly. God has not forgotten us. Just not. I'm going to jump ahead a little something. Just a little. I'm going to show you how God works. He he's really loves you. Watch this now. We're going to jump ahead a little bit to... Uh, verse 30... Verse 30, verse 34, watch this now. Yes, he stressed out time. And David said unto Saul, his, your servant, he's talking about himself now, your servant kept his father's sheep. Now remember, God did stuff for us in the past. He's well capable, well <coughs> able, <coughs> well loving and motivated to do something else for us. It's the same God, same amount of strength. So he told King Saul, your servant was out there watching my father's sheep. And there came a lion. There came a lion. Now this dude, he ain't no more than 16 or 17 years old. A lion came out, he's talking to the actual king. And King said, what, 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 what you going to do? Now, we jumped ahead. We're going to go back a little bit. A lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. How dare you? See, this is the, this is the attitude we have to have when they'll start to jumping off on us, ain't it? Right? Say, how dare you? Now, the bigger how dare you is not so much that the enemy is stealing, but the bigger how dare you is how dare we sit back and do nothing. That's the big how dare you. Well, I'm preaching good to somebody out there. That's the bigger how dare you. I'm talking all that stuff, how dare you. The bigger how dare you is we sit back, know somebody's doing something, know somebody's messing with our finances, know somebody's messing with our children. Know you out there got a daughter, you don't know where she is, and you, and you ride by and you see her standing out with the prostitutes. Dress on so short, you can see what's on her mind. How dare you take my baby from me out of my house and make a prostitute out of her? That lamb. My daughter's like a little lamb. How dare you? I'm preaching good to somebody out there. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Tell me I can't stop smoking. And he told King Saul, he said, I went out after him and hid him and delivered it out of his mouth. I hit him. He hit him with all the power that God gave him from heaven. And he didn't even tell you necessarily what he hit him with. 
He could have hit him with his hand. Could have hit him with his fist. And watch this. And when he, he said, I hit him, took the lamb out, but that animal was mad. Like a lot of time the enemy do, he's sore loser. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard. And hit him again. And killed him. Y'all don't hear me. Somebody ought to be hearing about how you, you got to stand up to these giants. Stand up to them. And David telling the king, he said, your servant slew both the lion and the bear. Lion, tigers, bears, oh my. Mm -mm, David wasn't saying no, oh my, oh my, scared. That being, being bewildered. No, uh-uh, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, Tommy Lyons. Tigers, bears, oh my, in this case, lions, bears, Goliath. No problem. That's what David was telling the king. I got this. Mm, verse 36. Exactly. The servant, your servant, king, your servant, killed, slew means, killed both the lion and the bear and he says this uncircumcised philistine shall be as one of them now he spoke it oh glory to god glory to god he spoke it he spoke it i'm talking to somebody out there he spoke it you gotta speak those things and not as though they are he hasn't even killed goliath yet now he told the king See, God is a king of kings and lord of lords. Sometimes he wants to hear us speak things of victory. But sometimes people are too scared to speak to God. God says, I got you. I want you to speak some things. I'm the king of kings. Saul ain't no, nowhere near the king that I was. So God said, now, these hard problems, these bad situations, I want you to speak. Tell me, son. Tell me, talk to me, your faith in me, what we can accomplish together. Wipe out this hideous monster right here. Hallelujah, I'm talking to somebody. Talk to God. Tell him to God, I'm, gonna, I'm tired of talking to the devil all the time. I want to talk to you. I'm so happy you want to talk to me. What do you want? I want to... I want to see souls saved. I want to do crusades around the world. I want to do revivals. I want to talk to, I want to go to prisons. How many prisoners are watching if they're able to watch right now? How many prisoners are watching around the world? They can, you know there's a lot of them watching. I need to hear these messages. I was facing 45 years in jail, 45 years. People tried to kill me and, and they, 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 they came out worse. Not one Christian in all that time, I did 19 years and God got me out. He got me out for 45 years down to 19 days. He got me out, but when I was there, not one Christian came to see me, not one. Not one. I fasted every day for 19 days. I lost about 50 pounds. I didn't eat nothing. I drank water, but I didn't eat anything. I turned my plate down. Not one Christian. Not one Christian. All that big old giant church that I was faithful to, that I worked with and worked for, was the drummer at the church. Always did all the revival meetings to help people and pray for people and 
fed families. And, and then when I was accused of something I didn't do, not one, then they sent back word, good for you. He, he need to be in jail. Maybe something he did. Not one. But God got me out of that. He got me out of that Goliath situation. Oh my God, y'all. I was having a hard time forgiving them so-called Christian folks. I was, I was having a hard time. I'm not gonna lie to you. Don't sit up here and say earthquake man, you all. No, 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 no. Don't say that about me. I was having a hard time forgiving them people. Hundred some people could have came. They could have taken all that prison, had a revival, not one of them, and then send it back word for me to die in there. Talk about a Goliath. And God said, I got something for you. Then he said, I will, he, God, like he's saying, God, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with you. God is saying to some of you all that have been held back, now God is speaking through you today through this message. God is telling you, he's telling you, Lord, I'm, I want to be something in you. I've been home, I've been saved for 15 years and I've been hearing your voice and God is telling you now. He said, go and I am with you. Oh, I wish I could get an amen out there somewhere to somebody, there's one person at least that this is for you tonight. This ain't you. This ain't you. See that? Thanks for being you, Remnant. This is not y'all. You, that's dismayed me. Marlene, that ain't you. That's dismayed me. This is you. Rewrite that vision. Rewrite it. Rewrite it. Rewrite it so it's so sound that air can't even get in between the pages. Make it so tight. See that remnant? That's why the devil is after you so. It's because he know that you've been told to do something. He's trying to keep you from doing it. See that? Lord's with you. Told Joshua, Joshua. Everywhere the sole of your foot touch I'm giving you as a heritage. Don't look, don't look like she's trying to, she's having a rough time. She not really, she about to pull her hair out. I don't know if hair grows back if you pull it out at the root. I don't know. I really don't. I don't want nobody to try it just to, to see. I don't know, but I, I, I wouldn't suggest it. Hair is really sensitive. So please don't do that. Please don't get to this point. Please don't. If you want to call, that's the number for prayer. Area code 661-944-1429. That's area code 661-944-1429. We're going to pray against every Goliath. Prayer. Bless you, Ray Kelly Ministries. Are you there? Hey, is this? Yes, sir. Hi. This is me, Earthquake. How you doing? I'm well, man. How are you doing? Oh. Good to meet you, man. It's a pleasure to meet you too, man. Yes, sir. Huh? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was. Listening. I was on Friday in Christ, man. This is awesome. I, 
I have no idea what what the heck's going on here. I have been trying to figure out it myself. Me and my wife have been trying to figure it out. But yeah, um, I just want to give you a call, man, because I remember I watched your videos, um, and it all started making real real sense, and then it started actually happening. So I'm like, what is going on? This is really weird. Oh man. So I'm glad you've been watching. We try to help people the best we can, cause. People need, they need someone to be just, just down right to the, where the rubber meets the road, because, you know, so much happening now, and we got to help people, man, you know, and give them the word, and so many people dealing with Goliaths now, as uh, Kobe was a Goliath, and he, you know, he hurt a lot of people, then there's a lot of physical things, and then, and I was doing some research here recently, what's your name again, brother? I'm sorry, but... My name is Dylan. Dylan? Oh, okay. Okay, Dylan. Yeah. So I'm doing some research. Yeah. Man, I was doing the research around the world on people who who just having a rough time mentally. And they say 3,000 people, 3,000 people a day around the whole world commit suicide or attempt it. And so I was like, oh, my God, that's horrible. It's just horrible. Yeah. I lost two of my friends to that. Um, oh, that, man. That kind of stuff. Sorry, and um, so I try to sad. preach the gospel to them. I mean, I just, I just call to see if you pray, pray for them. Just, just pray for us, man. Just keep us in your prayers. Like, mm -hmm. this, this is wild. This is it's just, it's just, it's just too crazy. I'm like, this is nuts, man. I can't. I feel violated. I don't feel like this is my home anymore, man. This is ridiculous. And yeah. I'm trying not to come to agreement with anything that's that's around me right now. But it's just at this certain point where it's like. I'm like, just, I'm just like, I, every, I wake up, and, and as soon as I wake up, man, and as soon as I go to sleep, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> oh, Dylan, you, 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 in the, in the, um, 46th chapter of Isaiah. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a thing that attacks men. And uh, anybody listening as a witch is that listening, you know, God bless y'all. Y'all need to be saved. Come on, call in. But they know what I'm talking about when we talk about the spirit that attacks men, and especially young men. And it's and it's called Nebo, N-E-B-O. And it's hard. It's really a hard thing because it messes with your mind, messes with your body, it messes with yeah, your position. Yeah, because it's like, I'll, I'll do something, right? Mm -hmm. And like I'll go around my house, right? And it'll say, "Yeah, do that." Oh yeah, open that up and put that in the sink. I'm like, I thought I was going to do that. Why are you telling? Like, goes ahead of me to the point where it's like aggravating. I'm like, I'm like, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. don't shut the door. Like, don't slam the door. I'm like, who are you? Like, yeah. who are you commanding me in my house? How dare you? Yeah. Like, who are you? You don't pay the rent in this unit. And it's like, I'm just like, this is my house. And it's like, this is my house. I'm like, excuse me? Mm hmm Excuse me? Yeah. And when I was talking to you on the YouTube thing, as soon as that happened, it was like something knocked on my bedroom door, like tripping out. I'm like, well, that's never happened before. Yeah, that's the waster. That's, that's the waster. He's mad because you're learning something. You the learned what? The waster. What's that? Waster, you know, some people call it the boogeyman. It's the waster. Oh. Yeah, they be oh, in the wall. Oh, that walls. makes so much sense. Yeah, that's what that oh, is. Oh, it's like a troll almost, right? But your phone is breaking up. Say it again, Dylan. It's, it's, it's like a troll almost, right? A troll? Yeah. Yeah, they come in all it's sizes. Like they come in all sizes and they hide. If you get the, your Bible out when you get a chance, to look at uh, Habakkuk two eleven, and Habakkuk two eleven it shows you where they hide out in the walls, in the person's house, and then when they get ready, that's what yeah, that's what's happening. They're in the walls. So how do I get that thing out? You well, here's what I always tell people: you get some get some anointing oil. This is what uh, Moses did when he was in Egypt. And uh, the other the, the apostles, uh, uh, Paul, you get some anointed oil, someone that's prayed over, that's really saved them, getting that oil from uh, the curiosity shop. Don't bother them. Get some real Holy Ghost-filled person to pray over it for you. And we have some here. 
you know, we'll send it to you. It doesn't cost you anything. All we just ask for is a, a little donation for shipping and handling. We can, you go around your house and you're anointed. Them hobgoblin demons don't like that. They don't like that. Yeah, I call them hobgoblins, so you know. I mean, that's an English I don't, I don't, dude, listen, this is legit. It's just like, I'm doing that crazy. My wife's like, you're going to skip the training. I'm like, heck no, I'm right. Mm -mm. I'm going to skip the training. I'm like, bruh. Mm -mm. I'm like, no, you're going to get in contact with this guy. Like, I'm like, Lord, let me call this man. And then now I'm here calling you, and here we are, man. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, bro. I'll help. I, I, I want to help you. My, Dylan, I, I know what it takes to... Um, I know what it takes to 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 get it to get these things up out of your house down to the pits of hell where they belong and don't torment Amen. you. You God's property, man. You belong to God, not them. And there's a way to do it. Jesus says so. God says so. Amen. Yeah, and now, and, and you get my address. You take my address to my PO box. And you send a little donation, and I'll send that right to you, man. You go around your house and take authority. You take authority over it. Okay. Mm hmm Take authority. What's the, what's the yeah, address? You can, you can come in and say hi. Hold on one second. My grandbabies is here. Come this way. Hi. How you doing? Hey. How are you? How you doing? Hey. Hi. 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 Y'all say hi to everybody. Hi. Hey, man. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Doing fine. Thank you. <laughs> hey, bud. You had you you ten hot rooms and take away ten. What you got? Zero. You had ten. 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 <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, live now. We got three people. Yeah, I'll be through in a little bit. Okay. All right. Excuse me, Dylan. I love my grandbabies. I had to. Hey, that's all right, man. I have all the patience in the world with this, man. This is. Hey, sometimes I've been trying to get people to help explain to me because I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, it's actually more than this. It's just what the Bible is telling us. Like, the Lord has more information to tell us. Oh, yes, yeah, a lot, man. It did. I mean, oh, uh, let me give you my P.O. box. And you get some little donation. I mean, it doesn't have to be no million dollars or nothing, but a little donation. Can put your return address, and, and our staff will send you out some anointed blessed oil. And uh, we went to we went to to Israel three years ago, and all that oil is gone. So we have some oil that we blessed here in America ourselves, our ministry. So it still works the same, you know. So you know we don't have any more of that, but but we do have some some blessed oil here. So, just send it to P.O. Box, P.O. Box, 1192. That's in the city of Little Rock, California, 93543. Actually, I had it wrote down. 93. Yeah, hold on one second, Dylan. I had it all wrote down here nice. I usually have it. 93943? No, no, no. Let me give it to you again. Are you watching the screen? Yeah. Okay, I'll, hold on. I'm going to write it down. Let me write it down fresh for you. So that way it, uh, it'll be able to. I had that all information ready to put it out there on the screen and doing some, some paperwork. I sort of um, moved it someplace else. Okay, I'm rewriting it fresh there. I got it printed out, but... Hold on one second here. Little Rock, California, not Arkansas. <laughs> when I say Little Rock, people automatically think of Arkansas. But there's a Little Rock, California. We're up in the mountains by the ski resort. You like skiing, in the winter time, this is the place to come. I have friends that live up there, but I personally, I'm a sled person myself. <laughs> I get on the sled, but you'll get on the skis. There we go. 
There we go, my brother. There we go. P.O. Box 1192, the city of Little Rock, California, 93543. And it's care of, yeah, care of Earthquake Kelly Ministries, M I N S. Our pleasure, man. Can we pray before we hang up? Definitely, man. I got time to go in a hurry. Oh, okay. Yeah, other people, other people trying to call, call in. That's all right, man. No, definitely, man. Definitely, I don't want to rush you. Yeah, yeah. You can always call back after this is over. With. We can talk too if you want to. But let's pray now, then. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Anytime. This numbers is yours. You can call anytime. People want prayer, or you know, the word of encouragement. Sometimes somebody want a word encouragement from me. Iron sharpens iron. I need some encouragement sometimes too, you know. Okay. Well, wait, Mister. Wait, Mister. Miss, Mister Dylan. May I call you Dylan? <gasps> Get out of here, Mister Dow. <laughs> Get out of here. Mama got something. Hold on, brother. Earthquake. Mama got something to say. May I pray for Dylan? I'm gonna pray for Dylan. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for my dear son Dylan, Lord, that you would touch him now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm 87 years old. You kept me 87 years, and I know you can keep Dylan 87 more years. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Mother pray for you. Mother pray for you too, Dylan. <laughs> okay. You don't want Mr. Doubt to pray for you. He ain't got nothing to say. I'm going I'm to I'm close it out, too. Heavenly Father, we thank you for dealing in this family, God, that you touched them. Lord, they get the victory over this house. They get the victory over these evil spirits and hobgoblins. I command them in the name of Jesus that they go back down to the pits of hell where they came from. No more tormented. No more tormented people in that house. Nobody to run and rip and run and can't sleep. God bless them physically, bless them financially. God bless their minds. You said if they keep their mind on you, you will keep them in perfect peace, no matter what condition they're in. You said you prepare a table before for dealing in the presence of his enemy. So as they eat in their dinner table, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against him, he shall condemn because that's the heritage of the saints of the Most High God. So bless him, God, as he continues to go forth and minister to more people that they get saved, delivered. Oh, God, thank you, and set free. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, man. Where you calling from? Where you at, man? I'm from Newport News. I'm in Florida right now, and we're actually trying to go to Isla Vista to go to my wife's trying to go to worship school there right now. Oh, good. Um, in California, but we're waiting for the Lord to move on that. It's a huge thing. We're in Florida, man. Like, like, um, huge population, man. It's just, we're just following wherever the Lord leads us, man. I can tell you stories, but I know you got calls. Okay. You, anytime, man, you got this number. It's wide open to you. Call anytime. And if I don't get right back to you, because mostly I'm traveling or ministering somewhere, but well, I will get back to you as soon as I get a chance to, to, to get back to the phones. Cool, man. All right, buddy. Love you, brother, man. I'll see you okay, later. love you, man. Peace. Okay. Earthquake Kelly Ministries, how y'all doing? Hi, Lord. How you doing? You doing good? Okay, I, I've just been having an issue that's been going on for a while, and I'm just wanting you to help me, or if you can steal me in the right direction. Okay. I um, went through a situation back when, this was back in the 80s, and I, I married the wrong person, and I believe they were there to maybe mention and dabble in witchcraft. I don't think they were good at that throne, and during this whole situation, I ended up 
going through a lot of abuse and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I went through some situations with some people. So I ended up eventually moving out of that city and I moved to this city. And it seems like the same spirit that was oppressing me in that other city, it came over here to the city that I live in now. Because it was a woman that came from the city that I was in and she started telling stuff. A lot of stuff she said was lies, but for some reason it just spread it all over the city. And I'm really, you know, I'm a laid back person. They might see me like, you know, minister or whatever, or they come to the church, they may see me. But other than that, you know, I don't, I don't like gravitate to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it's a situation, the spirit has been following me. I went to a church service because I was I'd been praying and asking God. And the person that called me up and they said that it was some witches that got together and they chose me to put the spell on. And um, and this person, they really didn't know me, you know, didn't know the situation. So I knew it was God because I had been praying, but they never told me how I can get free. And I know I'm about to leave from this city and move to another city, but I don't want that same spirit following me. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I know, so I I know what that is. I, I can help you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, what's your first name again? It's Anita. Anita, okay, Anita. Praise the Lord, Anita. Yeah, hold on one second, okay, I'm pulling them. Can you, can you see the posters, the drawings? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Um, you got your Bible handy? I can get it right off my phone. Okay, well, go to Old King James. I like the Old King James. Go to Old King James. Um, Psalms 40 and 14. Mm. Okay, Psalms 40 and 14. Yeah, what it say? What it say? Okay, let me get, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm still getting it up. Okay, all right. Okay. Psalm 40 and 14, it says, Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Now, now, I needed the smallest form. I'm going to explain to you the whole thing what's happening, so we're going to pray. God's going to disperse this mess for you, okay? Amen. The, Thank you. The smallest form of witchcraft is called wish. W-I-S-H okay? okay Witchcraft means That they're not necessarily Deep into witchcraft Like Voodoo Like my dad was Voodoo He was a changeling Okay I'm not saying these are changeling people That can change into different animals It might be but You don't Although what I'm saying You don't have to be deep like my daddy was uh, or, or even as deep as I was, my father was as deep as levels you can get. I wasn't that deep. Actually, I was scared to go deep as him. It's just too frightful. But then the, some people, they, they're, I call them Walmart witches. <laughs> well, okay. Walmart witches, they go on the shelf and try to find something to hit you with, you know. Or they'll go to somebody and try to, because of, because of jealousy, because of beauty, because of your spunk, because of you got something that, that they don't have and they want or they're jealous of you, and I call them the Walmart witches, okay? And so Walmart witches practice what's called wishcraft. In other words, I wish something would happen to her. She's not happy. I wish something happened to her so her house gets on fire. I wish something happened to her. She'd slip and break her, break her ankle. Any little thing that can do they want to, they stop you, and they're willing. Some of these, these people got deep, deep pockets, okay? They can mm -hmm. move where you move in an instant because what's happening, God has, he's given you what's called Psalms, not Psalms, not Psalms, Proverbs 18.16. Get that for me, please, and need it. Mm -hmm. You have an extra minute? I don't want to wear you out. Oh, no, I'm enjoying this. I've been watching your videos, like, almost nonstop. 
stop. Oh, you're too kind. There you go, being oh, too the kind. Video, so I, whenever you start the school, I definitely would like to attend some of those classes. Oh, what, yes. what is the scripture again, please? Uh, Proverbs eighteen sixteen. Here's what's happening. Here's what the Lord is showing me what's happening with you. And that's why the witch, the witchcraft wishers are trying to do this because of jealousy. Proverbs 18, 16. Okay, it says, A man's gift make a room for him and bringeth him before a great man. You see that? A man or woman. When they say man, they mean both. You know, brethren, pretty much. So, Anita's gift that is so powerful is making room for you and it's, it is, it's spreading out. It's spreading out like a big, beautiful rose bush. And then it's toppling over their yard and it's so beautiful, they mad. And, and, and they see something that's gonna happen and a lot of them are jealous. The Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. So what happens when they, they come after you with this witchcraft, this witchcraft is to slow you down, to slow you down, to make you, let me see if I can find a poster for you. I want you to see this. If okay. I, if I can find it here, let's see. It's here somewhere. All right, I'm a second. Hold on, Anita, I'm looking for it. This, uh, Let's see. It's called a laggard spirit. Are you familiar with laggard spirit? No, no, I'm not. You weren't in school that day. This was being taught. You, you no, missed... I, don't think, I don't think about the laggard spirit. I don't remember that one. No, this is this is witchcraft training. That's why I'm just messing with you. When I say oh, when you wasn't in school, <laughs> they don't teach this in public school. <laughs> no. It's a school, but it's a secret school. But see, God's called. Oh, here it is. Found it. God's called me to expose people. Uh oh, wait a minute. I thought I had it. Where'd it go? Had my hand right on it. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. I'm gonna put it back up so you can see it. Let me know if you can see it on the poster board. Can you see it? No, I don't see it yet. Okay. The picture, I got it light. Uh huh. Yeah. You see it now? A blue. No, Are you looking at Earthquake Kelly Ministries live on YouTube? Yeah, I'm on YouTube. Hmm. It's to see the yeah, lady with the. It's, just, it's, it's like it's foggy. I can't see the picture. Hmm. Okay. Can anybody else see this? Anybody out there? Okay, Devlin, he, he sees it. Let me see anybody else. Okay, well, I'll explain it to you. Maybe you'll see it another time. I see Tommy can see it. What this is. This is uh, other people. Thank you all. They say they can see it. This, this is, this is called a laggard spirit. A laggard spirit is also called slothful. You know, there's an animal called a sloth, and he moves super, super slow. You know, he can move yeah. super. So what happens? The enemy, the enemy will try to to slow your life down because of wishcraft. Wishcraft, W-I-S-H. So they accuse, they accuse Job, they accuse Job of, of using uh, evil stuff against people to wish them. So go to Job 31 and 30, please. Okay, okay I can see it now. Okay. I got it on the phone. Oh, good, 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 good. So, Joe, 31 and 30. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. okay. 
What to say? What to say? See, his so-called friends told Job, Job, the reason why, reason why you got this problem is because something you're doing. So Job came back, said, uh-uh, no, 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 uh-uh, I ain't do nothing, okay? I am not wishing anything back, I mean, anything bad to happen to anybody. So this thing comes from my mouth, see? So what's happening? It's not only you you need to uh, uh, Anita, you need to deal with these things because you you got the key in your hand. He said, "I give you the keys, right? Whatever you unlock, he'll unlock, right? Loose, yeah. whatever you bound, he'll bound. So take the key. I'm gonna draw you. I'm gonna draw you a set of keys in your hand, okay?" Okay. I'm going to draw your set of keys because you need to get these keys operating I'll in you. Like I sort of figured that much, but I didn't want to say anything. But I said, this looks like a needle, but I ain't going to say nothing. Because you try to quick. Brother Earthquake, are you, Brother Earthquake, why are you picking on me? No, it's okay. just, I can could, I could tell what you look like. God has shown me what you look like. So he said, draw that yeah. for Anita. She need to see her stuff getting free. I'm making you some keys, okay? okay? I ain't making you no skeleton key. You don't need no skeleton key. I'm making you a key to the key to the Holy Ghost pantry. Amen. Ah, glory. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, glory. You. Oh, my goodness. Mmm, hallelujah. Key to the pantry. Ooh, glory. Yes, 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 yes. Mmm. It's got a it's got a point to it. That the enemy it's it's the cross is on there. See that? The cross on there signifying that Jesus paid the price. And anything that I need to want, the finances, the food. You can go and you can go now wherever you come to Hollywood this way and hang out with my wife and I. He said, Earthquake, Selena, I want to go to any restaurant that says Shea in front of it. <laughs> you know them, them fancy restaurants, they say Shea. I don't know what that means, but I speak Creole. I don't want to remember way bon spot money me. I speak Creole, but I still don't know what Shea means. So it probably means money. You see? So expensive. That's I know that's what it means. So you got all these keys here. Food, money, clothes, anything that you need, even the the, the shoes. Watch it now. I, I got to draw this for you, okay? May I? God told me to draw this for you. He told me to draw this for you. Where my, where my, come on here, pencil. He said he going to give you some red bottom shoes. See? Ain't that God working? Oh, bye bye bye. You see that? He said he giving you red, red bottom. See, the, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. From an ex sorcerer, which I was, thank God for delivering me. These people is jealous. They are, they are highly, one thing is to be jealous, but it's another thing to be highly motivated through jealousy. It's called professional jealousy. Maybe you didn't hear me. There's jealous, and then there's professional jealousy. These people's a professional at it. And they can't stop you. One to put a thousand, two to put ten thousand to flight. You know that you notice he just didn't say demons. He just left it open. What you say, because here's the thing. If you're going to get all of these, you're going to get all of this. You got the key in your hand now, okay? You got the keys in your hand. Now, here's the thing. If you don't deal with this with the quickness, now, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to tell you what's out there. There's a thing called Pixie. You know what Pixie is? 
You miss school again? I'm watching it. Theater. <laughs> you know I'm going to tease with you. <laughs> Pixie. Okay, here's what Pixie is. You, you ever heard of angel dust? Yeah. You remember what it did to, unfortunately, the people in the 80s and 90s? There's germ and all that stuff. Yeah. But well, there's another thing called pixie dust. Pixie dust comes out of the mouths of... See, every time somebody smokes, every time somebody smokes, and I tell a lot of people this around the world when I go, every time they smoke, you're inhaling and breathing in demons' breath. You're breathing in their breath in your mouth. Mm. Well, you didn't hear me. Maybe you didn't hear me. No, I heard you. Yeah, so the eighth chapter, the eighth chapter of Ezekiel talks about an actual spirit called Zapan, S-H-A-P-A-N. The, the demon of, he's a demon over fire and smoke. Now, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but maybe you might know somebody might need to deliver from, from smoking. So when you pray, when you pray, Okay, now this ain't got to, this is nothing to do with you directly. But I'm saying, when you pray against somebody smoking cigarettes, you you come against that. Okay. Okay. It's called the spirit of Zapan. It's in the, it's in the the book. It's in the book of Ezekiel, the eighth chapter. Okay. In case you wanted to tell somebody, you may have a friend or a cousin or somebody that's smoking. But then when you pray for them, you come against that. Because okay. what happens? It's called putting the branch to the nose. Okay? It's called putting the branch to the nose. Okay? Yes, it does. Saint, Saint, um, who's that? Big Durchin? Yes. So every time somebody smoke, if you're out there smoking weed, what's happening, you're, 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 you're applying demonic stuff called pixie dust. You ever see that thing on Disney, Anita? That little, that little fairy thing that flies around has that wand and then it right. touches the screen and all of that stuff comes. That's pixie dust. Okay? That's pixie dust. So okay. if you don't, if you don't turn and have somebody help you to fight against this laggard, what's going to happen, this thing is seasonal. It's like pollen. And if you, if you don't move away from it, it's gonna, it's gonna catch up to you, and it's going to start. You see the picture? It's gonna, yeah. it's gonna start to affect you, even though you have the keys to unlock yourself. You got the keys. Use them. To the Holy Ghost yeah. pantry, your finances, all these other things. And then, you turn around, and you bind the works of these hog goblins. You buying it, y'all. Uh, enough now. Enough. Get your nasty hands off of me. Take this. This is called a feather. This big thing right here. This is called a feather. You know what feathers are. That's that big old buckle handcuff for your ankles. How are you going to enjoy your red bottom shoes and you got this on you? You can't. And if you don't move fast enough, they're gonna, they're gonna try to put what's called Hazeb on you. You know what Hazeb, jealous people do these things. I'm, I'm exposing what they do. You know what Hazeb is? No. We was having school three o'clock in the morning. Where was you? <laughs> <laughs> I think that, no, yeah. I suffered enough in them schools. You didn't need them schools. Let's go to, let me show you what they're trying to do, my sister, as God leads me to help you. May I? Yeah. I have to ask your permission because I don't want to be overbearing on people. But if you don't mind, I, I would love to help you because you got a call in your life. I was going down the street today with my wife and there was a freight train coming. And everybody heard that freight train. He, when he pulled that whistle, ooh, it was it was loud. That's what that's how you are. You, you, you got that that freight train thing in your in your throat. You know what a thoke is? All of the above. 
Now, if you don't get, if you don't move on this, here's what their plan is for you. And we're going to rebuke that. You got people behind this and the hobgoblins behind it. Look at here. Somebody say, look at here. Look at here. Now go to, you got Nahum 2 and 7? Okay. Because they're trying to do something to your body. Trying to run you till you just give up and they destroy you. Get out of here. Ain't nobody going to let you get to. No, I ain't going to sit back here and let you destroy my sister. No, that's not going to happen. Ain't, no, 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 no. God has brought me through too much of this stuff to then sit back here and not to help you. Oh, no. Then I got to stand me. Yeah, I got to stand before God. You're going to say, son, step up here. Yes, Lord. Why, why you didn't help Anita? Why? But see, what had happened was, see, um, my grandbabies was here. Yeah, yeah. And, and see, um, yeah, they're going to be all, all night with you. Yeah, I know, but see, what happened was, no, you should have took our time and helped Anita. You, 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 your grandbabies, uh, they love you, and they understand you spending time with people. You always spend time with them. You take them places. You take them here. You take them, you buy them stuff. They know your papa got a minister. But see, see, I don't want that to happen to me, Anita, okay? All right. Well, let's see what we got here then in the word. You got it, Nahum 2 and 7? Yeah. What'd it say? What'd it say? Uh huh. As with the voice of good, tambring upon her breath. Now, let me, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Hazeb, you know, I'm just, I'm just having fun with you, but do you know who Hazeb is? No, I don't. I was, she was about to get an A tonight. Lord, have mercy. You was, neither was going to get her an A in Bible class tonight, but I'm going to have to take you back down to, what, what, what grade you want tonight? No, 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 no. You went way past third grade. You're going to get way up to college when you get to learning all this stuff. No, 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 no. You're going to get, you're going to get this. Hazeb, are you taking notes? I'm going to watch it back on the video, believe me. Okay, okay. Okay, Hazeb. Let me show you what Hazeb is. Hazeb is the name of a spirit that causes breast cancer. Yeah. Now, let me explain this. I don't know if you've ever seen um, uh, the movie Ghosts with Whoopi and, and, and Swayze. Yeah, yes. Yeah, Swayze passed on, bless his heart, but uh, Whoopi and Swayze. And Whoopi played the part of, uh, I think she's in Bronx or Queen. Now, I'm from the New York area. I know that almost like the back of my hand. So she was, she was um, a, a, a witch. And she had maidens, right? right? And those two girls helped her. Remember those two girls, light-skinned girl and a darker girl? They was helping her. Those are called maids or maidens. Okay, now watch this. I want you to see the call in your life is so powerful. The enemy is trying to sneak in something on you. And God said, no. He said, no, uh-uh, you ain't sneaking nothing in on me. Because if, if they're able to sneak something in on you, I need to... Verse 10, you see verse 10, hear what they're trying to do to you. You're going to stand your ground, no more running. See what it says in verse 10 of Nahum 2 and 10? If not, I'll read it. I know you got to find it on the phone. I'll read it real fast for you. Okay, let me. You don't mind reading that. Yeah, I'll read it because I'm sorry with the phone. It takes time, but I'll read it. Verse 10, Nahum 2 and 10. Anita says this, she is empty and void and waste and the heart melt and the knees smite together as much pain is in the loins and the face of them all gather blackness it's not talking about it's not talking about african-american blackness it's not talking about none of that it had nothing to do with no color this is talking about a, a cloud a dark cloud that goes over a person so bad you can barely see their face Philodoxy, mammonism. You know what mammon is, right? Okay, mammon has another name in witchcraft called Pilodoc. Pilodoc has a dark cloud that goes over a person everywhere they go. No matter if you run from city to city, you cannot outrun this 
these hobgoblins, these spirits. So you got to stand your ground right where you are, like you're doing right now. Do you hear me? I hear you. Okay, let's go back now. Let's go back, sis. I'm not fussing at you. Okay, earthquake, don't fuss. I don't do that. I don't, you know, my grandbabies, they love me. I'm, I chastise them when they need it, but I don't fuss and beat them down. That's not me. I don't do that. Because I was beat down all my life, and I sure ain't going to beat nobody else down. Amen? Right. Right. You. Okay. And Hazeb shall be led away captive. In other words, when they, 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 they have to, she shall be brought up. What does that mean, brought up? They go through a trance. They go through a ritual. They go to this trance, the maidens do. And Hazeb is down in the pits down in the pit, okay, in the nether realm, the Bible talks about the nether realm, they go through, they go through this, this ritual, and she's brought up, okay, she's brought up, she stands there before them, and they lead, they, they with their voice, the silent voice, I know the voice, I'm not going to say it, because I don't want, just everybody's not delivering, I'm not giving no ammunition, okay, I'm not doing that. I know what they do. I know what they say. I guess won't show nobody. As with the voice of doves beating, tambourine means on their breasts. You know how a gorilla get mad? He bang on his chest. So when a person wants to put hazeb on another person's to cause breast cancer, they bang on their chest like you banging on a drum. What this does, it stimulates something. I won't show you how it does it because I know, but I won't. It stimulates something for a victim to have breast cancer. And they send this spirit to that person. And then verse 10, they, they first they become they become they become empty. They start becoming empty and very void. They pull away from people. They don't want to talk to people. Their, their, their mouth is dry. They constantly have to drink a lot of fluids and stuff happens. And then that, that energy and that thirst and that, that zeal for life, it starts to melt away. So to the point that their knees start to knock together. And then what happens is that spirit of darkness comes over them. Then they wind up either taking Thorazine lithium or they wind up on skid row. Then the enemy said, let's go y'all, get another one mission accomplished. Ain't no mission accomplished over here. No, neither ain't, 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 ain't no, 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 uh-uh, no, 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 no. Did you hear what I'm saying? No mission accomplished with you. Ain't gonna be none of that. We ain't having that in the name of Jesus. God did not bring you. He did not bring you and then place them keys in your hand and you never see a pair of red bottom shoes. Matter of fact, Amen. I gotta, I gotta draw. I gotta draw you some pointy red bottoms, cause see that. Cause guess in case the enemy try to run in the corner and hide, you gonna go in there and get him. See that? See the red bottom pointy shoe? <laughs> go ahead, run your happy self in that corner. I'm going to get you. Go on, run in there. I'm going to smash you in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. You're going to have them red bottom pointy shoes. And you're going to turn it around. And they thought they're going to have you running all across the country. No, nah, that, that's stuff. I mean, you move what you want to do. That's up to you. But not because, not because you're being chased. Bless you, prophetess. Not because you're being chased to run. Use your keys. The keys. Get these off of your ankles. Yeah. And God told me that look like you, favors you. All right, you got the keys in this hand. What you gonna do with this hand? Thank you, and then what else? <laughs> right. And what else? Lay hands. There we go, what else? Ah, there you go. Count the money. 
<laughs> Don't be mad, y'all. God wants y'all to be able to count the money, too. <laughs> oh, I hope somebody out there. I want to get an amen out there. Y'all don't be mad at the brother. I'm trying to tell you what God's trying to do. He's trying to bless with the heart desire. Enough of people running around here and say you're saved and you can't pay you can't pay nary bill. Not even one bill. Oh, I'm pretty good to somebody out there. Am I telling the truth? No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, no. No, uh-uh. Unlock yourself. You got the power. Oh, glory to God. God has given us the power. Did he not do it? To unlock yes. ourselves. Set yourself free. Yes. Well, I'm waiting on God. God said, how long you had them keys? Well, I've been saved since then. Uh, since 1980 and three. You've been saved since 80 and three and you still bound. Oh my goodness. You all see that? Who the sun sets free. Sun sets free. Try to put all that mold on you and sneak up on you and try to attach itself to your breast and then make you so you can't do nothing. I'm telling you what God told me to tell you. Amen. That's the truth. No. I've been going through all of that, and I'm like, God, it is time to get this demon spirit off of me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And God told me to help you and let you see yourself running through there, casting out devils, opening up. Just lock doors for other people. Rebuking that pixie dust off of folks. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to, you don't even have to see these, these things on you no more. And you know, they can turn into a weapon. You know the, you know the yo-yo? You, you heard of yo-yos, right? You know, yo-yos were weapons in the Philippines. Oh, wow, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yo-yo was a weapon. The guy standing in the tree. He's standing in the tree. They were big now as dinner plates. He was standing in the tree, and then you walk under that, that tree, he throw that big old thing down there, hit you in your head, split your head open, and then pull it right back up in the tree. And somebody saw that, and the whammo company said, that'd be a nice toy. And he took it and, and got the patent on it and made a yo-yo out of it. Man, that's where yo-yo come from, yo-yo, Philippines. And you could take this thing that's been beating you down and take it, put it in your hand, and crack the devil's skull with it. Wow. Oh, I'm pretty good to myself here. And then every now and then you think about earthquake and they might need a couple dollars over here to, to get some more papers and pens. And then slip us a, a, a offering er now and then. Uh, you know I will, because I, I planted a, a small seed yesterday at Gas Pass. Oh, thank I you. Told God, I said, if you bless, he blesses me. I'm definitely going to put a nice seed out there for you to bless. Because nobody is teaching us. I've been in church all my life. Church hasn't been all over me, but I've been in church all my life. I have never heard anybody teach what you're teaching. And I know what you're saying is true. Praise God. And he's coming right out the Bible. <laughs> and he's coming right out the Bible. And so That's what I was telling my therapist. And I sent him some videos. And then I do share your videos on Facebook on my page. Cause oh, thank you. This teacher. Thank you. I, 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 I would be honored, Anita, if you would pray for this. So people out there right now that's going through this. And... We, I think if you pray for them, they always hear me pray. But I think somebody else needs to pray tonight. Could you do that, please? And then you know what happened? When Joe prayed for his friends, other people, God gave him twice as much right after that. That's true. Would you pray now, please? Yes, yes, I'll pray. Thank you. 
Father God, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you forgive us of all of our sins yes. and all of our transgressions. Oh, hi, oh, Baba. Hey, glory. Yes, yes, yes. I had your cartoon moving as you was talking, like you was it was coming out from the cartoon. <laughs> it, it was animated while you was going forth. It was anointed. And you know, you said something. All that I appreciate. It. I thank you for all those prayers. But when you said the camera people and oh, I need all of that, 
Mm, I need, I really do need that. And if I know when you prayed under the anointing, there was people out there needed that heard what you said, that heard how you came against all of these things, heard, and, and that the amens has come forth because it's, people got delivered from these shackles and neither while you were praying, shackles was broken off, shackles. And then the, the women, when you started out, please y'all, go in, go in, hey, Irene, how you doing? Go in and have yourself checked out. Okay, my wife, my wife did. This year she had breast, my wife had breast cancer. Now we help, we help people all over the world get healed of breast cancer. And now Hazeb attacked my wife breast cancer, with breast cancer. And she went and we prayed and we rebuked it, we fasted. She went back and that cancer is gone. Been gone now for the last three, three, four weeks. Oh my God. See, get yourself checked. There's no harm in going to being a Christian, getting yourself checked out. Amen. Naturally and spiritually. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Keep keep us in your prayers. Yeah, but God bless you. And and you have the number anytime you want to call, you can ask for me or my wife or my secretary, Gwen. They're powerful women of God, actually. If you're anywhere near the Phoenix, Arizona, next month we're doing a conference there in Phoenix. We're doing a conference there. We were there. I preached two Sundays ago in Phoenix, and the, the people were packed. I mean, even after the service was over, neither. I still couldn't go home because people had questions, and, they, and, and, and we had to, because it's not a lot of places people can go to get their questions answered around deliverance stuff. You know, so God has raised up people like myself and my buddy John Ramirez. If you're listening, he listens to me too. And so my buddy John Ramirez, who was, he was, he was in Santeria, and God delivered him just like, and we're from the same part of the country, except we didn't know each other. He was down the street. I was in Connecticut and some parts of Harlem, and he was in the same area, you know, doing the same thing, but we didn't, we didn't know each other. But God knew us. And he knew what we needed. Amen. And he brought us both out. So thank you. And and I'm going to see if there's one more call, Anita. Please stay on. And, and okay. I got a few more thank posters. You so You're welcome. You feel better, don't you? I sure do. You feel free. You sound free. I do. I feel much better. Amen. Amen. You get the red bottoms, okay? Get that one with the real point on them. Okay. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We love you. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Okay. That, was, that was so much fun in talking to a lovely woman of God. Amen. Shelby, God bless you, sir. God bless you. I really enjoyed talking to her, woman of God. Sure enough, she prayed under the anointing. Hallelujah. Let me show one more poster, and I'm going to go spend some time with my grandchildren. My grandchildren. Let's see what this is. Let's see. That's a lady with the snake on her head. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. I think what I'll do is uh, I'm going to go out there and spend some time with my grandbabies. And... Uh, I shall return. Way to park. Hey, God bless you. Alexander's nephew or cousin. Good to see you. So we're gonna we're gonna talk and help you deal with when we come back. Rebellious teenagers, how to deal with them. All right, we should be back in about an hour. If you have any rebellious teenagers, I'm gonna show you the scripture, what the scripture says. And we're gonna see you in a little bit, rebellious teenagers. Bye for now. Don't forget we need your help. Dollar sign, Earthquake Kelly, and also we have PayPal. Oh, sorry, Bess, let me show you the number here.
I'll show you the number. What do I do with that number? <laughs> I'll write a fresh One second, I'll give you the number. Yeah, in about an hour, I'll be back. If you know any teenagers dealing with rebellion, I know some. In the All of this is Bible. I'm not making up anything. It's in the Bible. That's the number if you want to call back. We'll be back in about an hour. And for the blessed oil too, yes. So you can email your address. Yes, yes. Yes, John Ramirez is my buddy. You see him, you tell him earthquake. All you got to say is earthquake. He'll know. <laughs> they call this number about an hour from now. It's five minutes after six here, local California time. And you can all, and about an hour, about seven o'clock our time. If you're still up, you may call 661-944-1429. That's 661-944-1429. I'll say it one more time. 661 661- 944-1429. Well, ain't Brother Kevin. Let Mama say it, Brother Kevin. Mama wanted to say it, too. Mama is seven, but Mama can still say the number. Here goes, y'all. Get your pencil. Mama, oh, Mama is seven years old, but Mama going to say the number. It's 661. That's 661 944. Y'all got that? 661 944 1429. Okay? 661 944 1429. Brother Earth is going to be back. Mama going to be here too. We heard Mr. Doubt left. Mr. Dow gone. He ain't gonna be back, baby. But don't worry about Mr. Dow. Mr. Dow gone. He ain't gonna be back. What do you mean, mother? I'm right here, mother. <clears throat> be gone, Mr. Dow. You just sitting on my nerves. You're getting on my last nerve. I'm about to have enough of you now. I'm about to have enough. I'm supposed to pull out my knife. Now, mother, you can't pull out no switchblade. I got my switchblade, baby. And mother tired of Mr. Dow. Well, you can't pull no Swiss blade out on me. I I work with the police department. I'm going to cut you, Mr. Dow. You just keep on messing with my baby earthquake and see what happens. Y'all, come back in about an hour, please. I'm going to try to settle this with them. All right. Love y'all.